welcome to the flight simulator cliffs of Dover. My name is Nada Zero and I'm sitting on the pilot seat of a Heinkel 111. And this is the second video in the series of tutorial videos for the Heinkel. In this part I'm showing level flight and the use of the autopilot. So let's jump into the cockpit and start. So here we are in the cockpit of the Heinkel. After the start we have done a turn and we are now pretty good on our course. The, the airfield is just to our left and we are right on course to the first waypoint which is straight into the direction we are flying. Level flight is not as easy as you might think. You have to watch all the gauges, you have to look for the compass and you have to watch out for marks on the ground. I have the icon of the plane here on the map, so this makes it much easier, but if you don't do this, you have to look for markings on the ground and have you to look where you are on the maps and to calculate your course. The first thing we need to do is we have to get a better, better trim to the plane. Here on the over our head we see the bank and turn indicator and this has a little bubble and this bubble needs to be centered. If it's not, if it's to the left, like now, we need to correct this with the rudder trim. And if it's left, we have to trim left until it's centered. As soon as this is centered and also the indicator is not moving a lot, then we have a much better trim plane and this flies much easier and we don't need the high forces on the steering column as when it's bad trimmed. So this makes flying much easier if you have a good trim. While flying you always have to watch out for all the gauges. So for example let's have a look to the engine controls up there. I'm zooming in. And as you see here the temperatures are at around 60 Celsius and all the other gauges are also in a vertical position and this means everything is fine. This makes flying with a Heinkel very easy because even from a distance we can see with one short uh, look that all the gauges are in a vertical position and so this means everything is okay. Holding the course and keeping the engine happy and everything is pretty much work. So. To make it easier we have an autopilot. The autopilot is working with an instrument which is called uh, Kurskreisel in German, so the gyro compass, and this has to be initialized before we can use it. So if we look closer to it, this has two scales. The upper scale has to be matching the compass and the lower scale uh, is for the autopilot. Um, we are using the knob on below and we are turning it into the correct dire direction until it's matching the compass and now it's on 345 and this is exactly the same as the compass. So the upper sky scale is now correct and following our direction. The lower scale is telling the autopilot where we want to go. It's now on 330 and our course is 20 degrees we want to fly, so we need the switch here on the left, this left right switch, and I have of course keys connected to this, can be used to correct the course, and if this is pointing to 20 degrees, we, the autopilot will try to get the upper scale and to match the lower scale by changing course. Before we switch on the autopilot, we do this to initialize the whole process by ourselves because the autopilot would do this with very strict and very harsh corrections. And now we are on the right course. The autopilot switch is unfortunately not here on the dashboard, so we need a key for this and when we switch it on, this yellow indicator is indicating that we are now flying on autopilot. The autopilot is now going to keep the two scales matching and so we don't have to watch out for the course we are flying. 
if the course is not perfect we can just change it with a switch on our left for example i'm clicking a little bit to the right and so the course is going to be changed to the right those switches are uh, on the left of the pilot seat another one is here on the steering and the third one is on the position of the bomb side so it can be used during the bomb run by the co-pilot while the autopilot is doing our jobs and flying to the next waypoint we have time to look for other things over our head for example the speed is now at 220 the best climbing speed is about 200 km per hour so I'm changing the, the elevator trim to the back and so we are climbing a little bit more on the left side also over our head we see the, what the autopilot is actually doing this instrument is showing with the upper white marking if we are on course. If it's to the right, the autopilot has to change course a little bit to the right and if it's to the left, of course, vice versa. I'm changing now uh, the course. I we want to fly to the right with the switch and the autopilot is seeing, okay, they want to change the course and so he is following the white marking and tries to get it centered again. Checking the engine values, we see that the load pressure has dropped a little bit from 1.2 to 1.1. This is because we are climbing and we are getting in thinner air. The Heinkel is equipped with turbochargers and they can be switched on. And typically, according to the manual, you do this as 3000 meters, but I'm doing this now and I'm doing this with the mouse. So I'm switching on the turbochargers loader and now we are back on 1.2 bar load pressure the next thing we are looking is the propeller pitch we are still on highest uh, revs so we are uh, now flying with 2200 uh, revs and this is about approximately the maximum allowed for the Heinkel and there is no danger to get more because this is automatically controlled. The con if you look closer, this is we see here a clock and this is telling us it's 12 o'clock and this means in German planes we are on maximum revs. With two, these two switches here we can, and I have there are keys for this and I'm going four clicks down and now we say to the automatic we want to have 80% revs. So immediately the, the clock is going down to 11.40. This means we have uh, a higher pitch and this also means lower revs. And as you see the revs has now dropped to a lower value. Typically you are not flying for hours with highest revs but with lower revs because you have less fuel consumption and so it's easier to get to larger distances. So let's have a look to the map and as you see here we are almost at our waypoint. So it's time to change course. Our next waypoint is behind Dunkirk, so we are going almost north. And the course correction for going north um, can be done with autopilot. It's a small course correction and I just need to push the switch a little bit to the left. Here you see this until we are on north. This course correction, as you see, is forcing the autopilot to do a, a pretty strong turn and we can interfere in stage one of the autopilot with a stick. So it's possible to help the autopilot to do a nice turn. And if we are on course, then we can fly over the North Sea and this is also ending this video. 
in the next video we will see the attack on Hawking using the load fee bomb site in the Heinkel.